Welcome everyone to a surprise update video for Motorsport Manager. So I was surprised to see patch 1.23 released today by the developers, uh, which most importantly adds the functionality of Steam Workshop to the game. Now I was both extremely excited and also a little bit hesitant when I saw that this patch had been released. Uh, the excitement is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I was excited about the the possibilities of modding. I've been excited about the workshop being added for over a month now uh, since they've made the announcement that it was going to be released in February. So they were actually, as it turns out, uh, a little bit early for that. But my, my stress level went up a little bit because over the weekend I had recorded a total of six videos related to modding Motorsport Manager, and of course all of them were done without any knowledge of Steam Workshop. Uh, and of course those videos will be, uh, you've already seen two of them released on the channel and the remaining videos will be released over the course of the next week, roughly. So my first thought was I'm gonna have to redo every one of those videos and have to throw away all the work that I had done. But as it turns out, that's actually not the case, um, which is both good and bad. But we'll get to that momentarily. Let's, there's a lot to cover here in the video. Let's start out by going through the patch notes uh, here toward the bottom of the screen, of course. The first one is the most important for me, which is that they've added Steam Workshop functionality. You will now be able to access the Steam Workshop from within the game itself. Secondly, a team's fan base will now increase when that team is performing better, performing better than expected. So that's something that uh, has been pointed out multiple times. I think I've pointed it out. Uh, I know for sure I've pointed it out in uh, at least a couple of the uh, modding videos you're going to see over the next uh, several days. Uh, so it appears as though they have gotten around to fixing the fan base issue. I'm not sure what all that's going to affect in game as far as the revenue items, but it'll be interesting to see how that works out. And then we got some uh, bug fixes along the way. AI cars that have experienced a part failure will now correctly return to their garage. I know uh, I've seen reports of some folks having cars that failed uh, during the race and stayed on the track. So this should help out with that, hopefully. And drivers that should perform better when pushing for the lead will now correctly experience a boost. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. That's kind of general and vague, uh, but it sounds like it could have something to do with a perk such as uh, the chaser perk, which says if you're in second position, then you get a, a the driver gets a boost in their performance uh, to try to chase down the leader. Could be something like that. But again, it's fairly vague uh, as to what exactly that means. A fix to unlocalized driver personality traits. I've seen a few of those. Uh, if you've seen your driver get a, a new trait along the way and it's got some weird coded messages in there rather than the standard text that it should have, uh, that's probably what this is referring to here. I know I've had a few of those. Uh, then you've got AI cars now make smarter decisions on when to pit to fix a part. That's always nice. And AI cars now scale their pit strategy lap calculations based on the player's selected race distance length. Okay, again, a good move. So let's go ahead and talk about some other things that I want to uh, touch on in relation to the Steam Workshop now that we have it. First, I want to go through the basic file structure that's been added to the game. Again, with the modding videos coming out, uh, th this will not be included in those. But I want to take care of that there, let you know what the new structure looks like for including mods in the game. And it's pretty good. I like how they've done it. Um, also, we're going to take a look at the modding documentation that has been released by the developers on some of the things that you can use and some helpful uh, hints if you are interested in creating mods. And then finally, we'll take a quick look at the workshop itself from within the game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the file structure itself. All right, for those of you who have uh, watched the very first of the modding videos that I did in, with regards to race distance and the speeds of the cars and so on, uh, then you'll be familiar with uh, what's on your screen now. And that is the file structure from within Motorsport Manager itself. If you're wondering where this is located, this is wherever you have the game installed. So for me, it would be Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Motorsport Manager, and then MM underscore data. 
So what they've done is they have added a new folder structure in here under the modding folder. And inside there, you will find various folders that link to the different things within the game that you can actually change out. Databases would be all of the things that I'm talking about in the modding videos, which is changing drivers' names, changing uh, the various structure of the races, the length of the races, the, the team names, the, the payouts, the HQ buildings, all that sort of thing would be located in the databases folder. Uh, images, logos are pretty self-explanatory. Then you got models. This is where you would put the new car models, which as we're hoping that we get some new series added to the game, such as the, uh, the GT cars or NASCAR, that kind of thing. The new car models would go in there. And then videos. This would be videos that play uh, normally before a track, uh, intro videos, all of that kind of thing would go in there. So the databases format is really what I was interested in, and I've already started using it. Uh, it's very simple to use. It's simply drag and drop uh, rather than, as I mentioned in the, the modding video, uh, having to create new files and overwriting files and making backups and all that kind of thing. Now you can simply drag and drop the text files themselves right into the databases folder, and they will be picked up by the game with one caveat, and we'll talk about that uh, momentarily. So this is the basics of the file structure in the game and where your mods will actually be uh, placed. Now, most of this you will not have to worry about uh, if you are on the user end of the modding spectrum because you will simply go into the workshop uh, hit the subscribe button, and all of this will be taken care of for you. Uh, the reason I'm showing this now is for those of you who are interested in getting into the modding side of things yourself, uh, you'll need to be familiar with this structure and where the various things go. So now let's move on and take a quick look at the modding document that was released by the developers. All right, so here we are taking a look at the modding document that was released by the developers. Uh, make note of the URL at the top. You've got motorsportmanager.com slash content slash making most steam workshop. Okay, so uh, you've got a lot of things that are going on. There are They let us know that they are using Unity version 5.3.6 and then give us a link to where we can download that version of Unity, uh, where we can, this is primarily for those who want to create new models, uh, whether it's new cars, tracks, that type of thing. Uh, if you're only interested in, in dealing with uh, the database type files uh, that I've been working with and have done the videos on, then you will not need Unity to do that. So it lets you know that they're using asset bundles for everything, and so Basically, within the games here, you see uh, in the first section, you see a lot of the text files that I mentioned in uh, the mod videos that I'm doing. So essentially, you will make whatever changes you need to make to the files. You'll create an asset bundle and then drop it into uh, the correct area within the game, uh, as we saw earlier in the video. And then you'll be able to test those from within the game. Um, and this screen shows you what it looks like within the game. And we'll touch on that um, here momentarily. Okay, they've got a few uh, notes, uh, only add assets of the same type in the same type of asset bundle. Meaning that if you're going to do a car model and you're also gonna do some database changes and maybe some, uh, some paint schemes for the cars, don't put all of those in the same bundle. And then we've got uh, the structure of uh, the layout that we need in the, in the file structure. And this we've already seen just moments ago. Uh, they also let you know exactly where the modding folders uh, are, uh, which again, we just took a look at earlier in the video, as you see here on the screen now. Also, here is the most important part for me, uh, again, going back to my excitement over the possibility of now making, doing the mods much, much easier uh, rather than having to deal with the resources file and overriding it, making backups and so on. Well, they kind of did that. And the reason I say kind of is because 
Here in this section, they talk about the databases, which are simply the text files that they've included for various things like the championship, which I did an entire video on, uh, drivers, engineers, mechanics, all of these things that you will now be able to change. Uh, teams, which I also did a video on that will be released uh, later on, sponsors, and so on. All of these things that you can change, and they mentioned that you simply put them in the databases folder as I was showing you a little bit earlier. The problem with this is that these are the only files right now that you can make changes to in the game. And that is a huge downer for me because I've made changes to several other files that will be covered in the modding videos to be released again over the coming few days or so. And those files don't work uh, in the game again, without me going through the overwriting and the new resource file and all that kind of stuff. So they don't work with the current layout and functionality of the Steam Workshop. So I was a little bit uh, upset with that because I, th I thought, why did you hide those files? Because that's some of the most important things to me. Uh, you've gotten rid of my ability to change the length of races and as well as change some of the HQ buildings and what their functionality is and all that kind of thing they have hidden from us. Uh, but I would assume that this is going to come uh, become much more elaborate and much more detailed and expansive in future updates. Unfortunately, it means that we're going to have to wait for future updates. And I am not a fan of that. We've waited quite a while for this update, and now we're probably going to have to wait a good while for the next update. So more database types will follow in updates. Again, I'm not quite sure why they didn't allow us to override those since they're only text files in this particular update as well. But it is what it is, so we'll move on. Uh, they let you know where to put the database files. And again, we just saw that uh, a little bit earlier in the videos and they go over various things of how to deal with new cars and new car parts. You'll need to make sure that everything is named properly and laid out property, properly in the file structure uh, themselves. Now, finally, I want to take a quick look at what the workshop functionality looks like from within the game. So here we are in game. And um, as they mentioned in the documentation, the changes that you make to any of the files will only, or at least any of the non-graphics files. Uh, so that would be things like the database files that I am currently working with. These will only take effect whenever you start a new career. Uh, so in, in preparation for that, I've gotten rid of all of my save files and, and copied them over into a different folder. So now this is the default screen for the game. And you can see that now the workshop area is active. So let's go ahead and click on that. And so here we go. You've got three options. You've got mods, assets, and my workshop. So the mods we see here, there are there's a, a basic mod here put in there by the developers just to give you some examples. Then we got a couple of test mods, it looks like, that have been added by different users so far in the short time that this has been active. Then you've got the asset section, um, and this is where you're going to get to, just as the name would suggest, small single tweaks to the game, such as a single car model rather than a mod, which would probably be much more uh, much larger and more inclusive of many gameplay changes. Then finally, you have the My Workshop tab, which includes all of the files that I personally have added to the directory structure uh, for the mods that we looked at earlier in the video. Now, this is how I first became aware that all of the changes that I had made and all of the files I had included in that structure were not going to work because when you come in game, you can see that only five of the files that I have added, so not even quite half of the files that I added are actually recognized by the workshop at this particular time. So I'm not terribly thrilled about that, but it gives you a way to um, add files within the structure and then create a new mod, or I'm assuming update an existing mod from here within the setup itself. So if you're interested in creating mods, then what you would want to do is if we get back out and you go into, uh, let's say that you have been working on a particular mod and you want to see how it works in game. So you want to give it a test. Well, 
you come in, start a new career, and then on this screen, you can see we've got mods available here. It shows all the mods in the workshop, the ones I'm subscribed to, and also the ones I have created. Now, for uh, the purposes of what I've been working on, there are no mods that I have created because I didn't need any of the asset bundles for the text files. So it gives you the option at the very top to say, test my mods, and you simply turn that on. And then it's going to load assets. I'm just going to work my way quickly through here so that you can see. Now in the actual tiers, if you remember to my introduction video on the modding, I have made quite a few changes to the series. Well, these changes are something that are actually implemented to this point. And the way I can tell, one of the ways I can tell is that all of the parts in the tier three series are spec parts. Okay. Also, I remember that when I was looking in the workshop, the files where you would uh, change these rule sets are actually included in those that the game recognizes. So some changes are implemented, but not all of the files, not all of the text files rather, um, have been implemented and can be changed in the game via the workshop and the new modding file structure. So hopefully this has been informative. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for more Motorsport Manager.